Hello everybody and welcome to the June 4th, 2018 edition of the Ephraim Josine Show. I am your host, Ephraim Josine. Anyway, we started with the Supreme Court, the unchecked branch of the federal government of, a, you know, the system that's supposed to have checks and balances. It doesn't make sense to me either. Anyway, our first story comes to us from TYT journalist Ken Kilpenstein. No clue what nationality that last name is, by the way. Um, it's from the Supreme Court. This, oh, you see, here they are. They did two things today in a span of minutes. Uh -uh. Supreme Court throws out lowercase decision that allowed undocumented teen to get abortion. So it is not allowing undocumented or illegal immigrants to get abortions. I'm mixed on this, honestly. On one hand, I don't really think it's a matter of the Supreme Court. I don't really think it matters in general. Um, but on the other hand, I would support this person being deported if we now know who they are. But that's on a side note. Honestly, I don't think the Supreme Court really can say no just because you're just because you're illegal. And no, you can't get an abortion. Well, what if the reason they came here was to get an abortion? That's a common thing people do. They go to other countries for medical procedures. You know, it. Just, I know it just kind of confuses me a little. But here's the other one. The Supreme Court threw out a finding that a Colorado baker illegally discriminated when he refused to make a cake to celebrate a same-sex wedding. Now, this one just sets a precedent for me that I'm not comfortable with, because what's next? is the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which, by the way, Republicans will remind you, they passed, even though they've been trying to dismantle it since 1965. Are we also going to start throwing that back, or do we need to start rolling back procedures? Because if it's same-sex marriages, why not black people, too? Why not Asians? Why not Vietnamese? Why not other racial groups, if sexual groups would mind you? It's much easier to tell someone's um, race than it is to tell someone's sexual preferences or sexuality. I can immediately tell that person is black. I've known people for a, quite a while before I found out, oh, that person is gay, or oh, that person is bisexual. Or, oh, you know, yeah, that just never happened with race because race is only visible. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it matters at all what sexuality someone is because it really doesn't outside of that one factor. However, at the same time, why not just roll back? No, you can also have white-only areas, or black-only restaurants, or colors-only water fountains. You know? I don't know, I can't be the only one who thinks this sets a dangerous precedent that I don't want to see we, us go down. Because in my opinion, it should just be, does the Civil Rights Act say you can discriminate? No. Well, then, sorry, but you got no choice. You know, it just, I, it just bothers me. Anyway, our next story comes to us from Florida, which is already the trash can of the South. And may I remind you, the South is already the trash can of the United States. Uh, essentially, Florida could best be described as the nuclear waste bin of the United States, the place where all the sludge goes. Anyway, um, apparently, there are tax dollars going to, because I haven't really talked about charter schools or school vouchers yet on this show, to make it short, I'm typically against them, and this is one of the many reasons why, because let me just read you the headline, your taxes are paying for kids to learn that dinosaurs and humans live together. Well, that is, if you are in Florida, because they are funding schools that that have that in their textbooks. Um, here's what it says. The textbook in question comes mostly from three Christian education companies. Albica, Bob Jones University Press, which if you do not remember, was the one that even, didn't even allow interracial dating for a long time and accelerated Christian education. In addition to teaching lies about evolution and dinosaurs, the book teaches that slaves who knew Christ were better off than free men who weren't religious. Well, that's just all completely true, you know? 
Yeah, you're a slave, but you know God's on your side. I'm joking, I promise. Here's some more. At the Orlando Sentinels, at least I think that's how it's pronounced, Sentinel, I don't know that word, request, educators from Florida colleges and school districts review textbooks and workbooks from these publishers, looking at elementary reading and math, middle school social studies, and high school biology material. They found numerous instances of distorted history and science lessons that are outside mainstream academics. The book denounces evolution as untrue. Well, I mean, we only have a whole bunch of proof on it. We still don't have the missing link, as these people like to say. Uh, for example, and one shows a cartoon of men and dinosaurs together, telling students that the biblical Noah likely brought baby dinosaurs onto his ark, and why they go extinct, but okay. Did Ken Ham... You know, the guy at the Creation Museum in, in Kentucky, did he make these? I don't... What? The science book they added seemed to discourage students from doing experiments. Well, that's just part of the scientific method. Who needs to know that? Or even asking questions. Um. Of course. Because you can't just ask questions, that leads to Satan. Jesus cries blood every time you ask a question, unless you're just asking questions. In which case, you're cool. But only if it's about the Democrats. I don't think anyone got that reference. Students who have learned science in this kind of environment are not prepared for college experiences, said Cyrent Sigeria. Bayer, a biology lecturer at the University of Central Florida who reviewed the science books, they would be intellectually disadvantaged. If you're not asking questions in science class, you're not doing science. Um, here's some more of the textbook, by the way. One book, in its brief section on the Civil Rights Movement, said that most black and white Southerners had lived together in harmony Oh, yeah, they were separate but equal, weren't they? You know, when they had, when there was genuine discrimination going on, no, they were just living together in harmony, and the blacks were disadvantaged, and they had underfunded schools. All of that was fine. And that power-hungry individuals stirred up the people. Yeah, it was all part of JFK and LBJ's giant conspiracy, I take it. Give me a break. You know, these are the people. I wrote an article a while back for EphraimJosine.blogspot.com, the Ephraim Report, about all these people who say that the Democrats are racist and they just stir up controversy. Jesse Lee Peterson just said racism never existed. Um, to, Gav to Gavin McGinnis. Uh, who wants to bet these were the kind of books he had in school? Who wants to bet these are the kind of books he'd support? Just, oh no, it was all a conspiracy by Northerners. The books are rifled with religious and opi political opinions on topics such as abortion, gay rights, and the Endangered Species Act, which one labels as a radical social agenda. Oh, you don't think we should wipe out all the endangered species? What are you, some kind of socialist? Uh, they disparage religions other than Protestant Christianity and cultures other than those descended from white Europeans. Experts said that was partially worrisome, given that about 60% of scholarship students are black or Hispanic. Whoops. And now do you guys see why people like me are skeptical of school voucher programs and charter schools and all of this? When there are charter schools, and I think Louisiana is where I saw this, but they're probably all over the country, that actively teach creationism. And, oh yeah, God made the universe. And, um, yeah, I did it in seven days, and then a woman ate an apple, and it had to be the woman because... You know, women are like that. 
Do you ever notice that kind of misogynist on their toe and Adam and Eve? I, I don't know, maybe I'm just seeing things. Um, but yeah, you know, and the good man, he tried to stop it, but, you know, and they're actually being taught that. John Oliver did a full bit on charter schools and how they're being, how if you're in an online charter, you're essentially losing the entirety of a school year. Um, I think his loss what was an average of 180 days in math out of a 180 day school year. And 180 minus 180. Well, these kids don't know. But, yeah, it just doesn't work. It's been proven it doesn't work. And supposedly they have all these advantages of the free market and closing down and all of this. And at best, charters get about the same results. Because they are still propped up by taxpayer dollars. That's the thing none of these people seem to understand. You know? And then... Anyway, I'm Ephraim, and good night.